Let's cross live to Brussels. Correspondent uh, Dave Keating uh, joins us. And uh, Dave, it's going from bad to worse in relations between uh, Britain and the EU. Yeah, it really is. This is in response to public anger after the figures about exactly how much the EU is exporting to the world came out. Uh, it was revealed that 10 million doses have been exported to the UK since January 31st that have mostly been Pfizer vaccines, uh, but it comes as the UK is not letting vaccines produced at the two UK facilities for AstraZeneca go to the EU. The EU says that those vaccines, the Vaccines produced in those two facilities were supposed to be part of their supply chain, but that the explanation they're getting is that an apparent Britain first clause in the contract between Oxford University and the UK government means that those doses have to be prioritized for British people first and therefore cannot be exported at this stage. So this is an attempt by the EU to pressure the UK essentially into releasing AstraZeneca from that apparent contractual obligation. It's a little unclear clear who else this measure is targeting. Von der Leyen saying there that the EU needs to rethink whether it exports to vaccine producers and countries that are far ahead of the EU. It looked very much like she was targeting the United States. Indeed, the EU was pushing for Joe Biden to release 30 million doses of AstraZeneca that are just sitting there in the U.S. because the U.S. hasn't yet approved AstraZeneca. Biden has refused. Uh, she was asked during the press conference about whether this measure is targeting the United States. She said no. No, because she views the trading relationship on vaccines to be reciprocal with the United States because the EU hasn't exported any vaccines there. In fact, the data the commission put out last week shows that in February, one million doses were exported from the EU to the United States, and reportedly 3.9 million doses of Johnson & Johnson were exported from the Netherlands to the U.S. this month. Uh, what I've been hearing from people in national governments today is they don't view this as entirely a U.K. issue, that they'd also like this threat to be kind of waged toward the United States to try to get Biden to release those 30 million AstraZeneca doses and to prevent a situation where Johnson & Johnson vaccines are being made here but going to the United States. But certainly in the short term, the bigger target here is the UK because of this issue about the two AstraZeneca plants in Britain. Yeah, and there's been reaction out of London. Let's listen to the UK Foreign Secretary. We've, uh, all of us, including with our European friends, been saying throughout the pandemic that it would be wrong to curtail or interfere with lawfully contracted supply. And it also cuts across the direct assurances that we had from the Commission, and indeed, uh, which I followed up on this week uh, and over the last uh, few days with Vice President Borrell and Vice President Dombrovskis, and we were reliably informed that they weren't aware of any plans to restrict lawfully contracted supply to the UK. Dave, I can imagine there's a bit of eye rolling where you are, seeing as uh, the uh, UK is accused by uh, the European Union of not honoring its uh, Brexit trade deal. Yeah, this is the same response we got last week when Charles Michel put this in a blog post that the UK had an export ban. The UK putting out a statement saying that they have not blocked a single shipment of vaccines. Well, that because there hasn't been any shipments of vaccines to block. And that is apparently because of this contractual arrangement between Oxford and the UK government. Uh, and so I, I could tell you this really, really irks people here in Brussels when the UK government comes out with this statement blaming the EU for vaccine nationalism when the EU is the one exporting about one third of vaccines that are produced here to the rest of the world. And meanwhile, the UK and the US are not exporting anything. So I think that the, the statements that we've heard from the UK government are not today are not going to help calm down the situation.